Hi everyone, this is week 13 of fabric manipulation and this video is going to be on smocking. We are going to focus on North American smocking, which is just 141 through 143. If you want to try out any of the other versions of smocking in the smocking chapter, you're definitely welcome to. Uh, we usually just do this section for um, UMKC's fabric manipulation. However, the rest of the choices are similar techniques, so you can try those out if you would like to. But I'm just going to be talking about North American smocking in this video. So smocking is based off a grid system of dots that you are going to use to connect or use slack stitches to create patterns in your fabric. So it's going to make a pattern that's going to tuck or pleat in a certain way to create a design. So these are a few of the different patterns that you can choose to make. And this is what they end up looking like after you are done with all of your stitches. So you can see that your fabric is going to shrink quite a lot. This is another one where you need to use a lot more fabric than you think is necessary because your stitches will shrink down your fabric and you will create a sort of pleated or gathered edge on the outside. So you definitely want to leave yourself a border around the design so that you can put that either under your frame or set it into another piece of your design, whichever you choose to do, make sure you leave yourself that border. Each pattern shows you a number system and arrows to show you how to do the stitches. So you can see that you are going to start here on one and then go up to here to two to the top corner. You want to think of your dots in sections of squares. And then, so you're going to start down here at the bottom right side, go up to two on the top left, then you will pull those stitches together. You're going to leave a slack stitch into three, which is down to the next box. And then you are going to go up to four on the other side and pull those stitches together. So when there's an arrow, that means that you're going to pull your stitches together to meet. If there is not an arrow, you want to leave that stretched. So I'm going to create myself a grid and we're going to go through a few of these different options of how to create the patterns. And you can mix and match them together. This one has a little bit of mixing and matching as well as the size increases as it goes down. So you can think about that and once you understand the concept, changing the size or the technique as you go through your design or through your stitches, you can change those things. But understanding how to do each one is very important. So I've got my piece here and I'm just gonna give myself about an inch border on the top. And what I wanna do is start marking out my little dots. So I'm going to do half inch squares. So that means I'm going to mark every half inch. Then I will move down half an inch and mark every half inch again. So this can be quite time consuming. I'm just going to use a very sharp pencil so that I have a small dot that's not going to go away. This takes quite a bit of time. So you don't want to use any kind of um, disappearing pen or anything that will disappear with the air. You will just want to make sure that your mark is going to stay visible for you. This is going to be on the back side and if you just use a very tiny dot uh, with your pencil then you should be able to see what you're doing while working but you're not going to see it once your product is finished because we are going to flip this to the other side. So we're going to be working on the back side of our fabric. I want to be very aware of my grain here. If you get slightly off of your grain with your dots, it can change your pattern a little bit and it's not going to behave quite as well. So just make sure that you're really paying attention to your grain. So mine is going up and down this way and I just want to make sure that my lines are going to follow that grain line as I make my grid.
So you can see I've got all of my little dots here that I'm going to do for our sample and they are hardly noticeable on this side, especially on camera, but you can see how tiny they are. And then on this side, you cannot see them at all. So we are going to get started and do some of the lattice design. And I will show you the first steps of how to do that. So you can see here that um, I'm going to start one down and one over. So not right at the first one here, but this um, second row and the second column. So that's going to be my number one spot. Then I'm going to go up to number two and bring those two together. Then I'm going to come down to number three and tie this off. Then I'm going to go up to number four and bring number four and number three together and then continue to go down to number five, make a knot there, go to number six, bring that to number five, go down to number seven, tie a knot there, bring that up to number eight, bring those together and I will show you how to do that over here on our real fabric. So I'm going to start here at my number one dot and I really want to take a very tiny stitch. So basically just picking up where your dot is. So just a few threads. So I'm going to pull that through to my knot and I'm going to go up to the corner in the number two spot and take another tiny stitch. Then I will pull those two, two things together. Then I'm going to go down to number three. But I'm not going to try to pull number one and two down to number three. That's going to be a slack stitch. Then I'm going to just go back through that so that I can tie my knot and it no longer pulls. Now I can go up to this corner to number four. I'm going to pull number four down to number three. And go in through number five to tie my knot. It takes a little while of working it to get it to actually start to look like something. When you first are doing it, you're going to think that you're just making a mess, but it really does start to work out and you can start to see, you can start to see a couple sides of my lattice here. It's going to start to look like a braid. So I'm just going to continue on and then I will show you how it looks in a little while. So you can see what it looks like after I have finished one row. I'm just going to get started on the next one. 
So for the next row, you're going to go right across from where your number four was. So you can see where your number one, number two, you've gone down to number three, and this should be number four. So now I'm going to go here for my number one. You can see I didn't quite tighten that stitch enough. Um, before I tied my knot because it's starting to pull out a little bit. Sometimes that can happen at your first um, first couple of stitches. Um, so you just want to make sure you're pinching those two points together as you tie your knot down on your slack stitch. So I'm going to go in here at my number one. So another thing that can happen is if you don't pick up quite enough threads in your stitch, it can start to pull them out. So you wanna make sure your stitch is small enough, but also large enough that you're not just grabbing one or two threads and it will start to pull. So you can see how that is pulling there and isn't quite tight enough. So it's not pulling my fabric together. If you have a situation like that, you can bring those two stitches together and just tie a little knot right at that point. So this is what it's looking like so far. I've just done a few rows here on the back. You can see what it looks like as well. So you can see that on the edge, you definitely want to give yourself an extra row because that um, part is just not quite as pretty as, as the center. So especially if you're going to set this into something or have your mat go um, over it I would give yourself one extra row just so that you can kind of cover up where it's a little bit messier um, and that's just because the the fabric isn't quite as controlled on that side as it starts to be towards the center so what I'm going to do is just um, pin out my fabric here so that it's nice and stretched out and everything is behaving how I want it to. I have one kind of weird little part right here that I want to fix. So I just want to stretch this out so that I can then steam over my smocking. And then we're going to do another version of smocking in a different design just to compare. So if you have any spots that aren't quite behaving how you want them to, you can just help it out by, um, you know, arranging the fabric with a pin and just pushing it down to how you want. Sometimes if your stitch isn't quite tight enough or just off the line just a little bit, then it just doesn't quite make the pattern correctly. So you can kind of just help it out by putting some extra pins in and steaming over those. 